sustainable nation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next speaker, Dr. T. Sumadhi ji. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Chairperson, sir, for allowing me to partake in this discussion on Ukraine. So the war will end, the leaders will shake hands, the old woman will keep waiting for her martyred son, that girl will wait for her beloved husband, and those children will wait for their hero father. I don't know who sold their homeland, but I saw who paid the price. So these powerful lines of the famous Palestinian poet Mahmoud Darwish keep on haunting us as we watch those disturbing images from Ukraine, civilians being bombarded, innocent civilians, carpet bombed and got killed in the warfare between two countries, and museums and theaters getting shelled, and our own Indian citizens, particularly students, fleeing to borders on foot, by foot. And more recently, the ghastly scenes of 410 dead bodies of the civilians unearthed and those who were ruthlessly killed by the troops, which was a family of a woman mayor of the Timotijin, who were buried in the pine yard. We are all heartbroken, sir. And war is one word which needed to be abolished from the dictionary itself. And it is high time as one of the largest democracy of the world, India with its positive image should take the moral responsibility to be the honest mediator between Ukraine, the world's largest food producer, and Russia, the greatest exporter of gas to Europe. Sir, the West may criticize us sitting on the fence and as a mute spectator, shaky, but we do understand that India has to adopt a diplomatic tightrope walk with its time-tested relationship with Russia. For all along, we have nurtured a pro-Russian sentiment, and we do understand that. And that on one side, and our membership in the US-led Quad Alliance on the other side. And also, it's fear about the China-Russia-Pakistan axis, a discomfort closer home. But still, the whole world looks up to us that we have to adorn the role of a real negotiator in the honest negotiator in the real sense of the term. So before proceeding further, I would like to pay homage to a dear Indian student who has lost his life in the war, and I uh, share the uh, grief with the family members. And also as a concerned citizen and member of the parliament, I would like to congratulate the efforts taken uh, by our union minister for the external affairs, uh, minister in uh, uh, for his, not alone for his humanitarian assistance, but also in the speedy steps he has taken in the transportation of our uh, Indian citizens, especially our students, back home safely. Sir, our minister in a statement in Rajya Sabha had issued uh, a statement, and he has told him that, that 90 tons of humanitarian assistance has been given, and he is planning to give more, especially medicines. I thank him also for having honored the request of our dear chief minister, who had taken proactive steps in this. Sir, the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has said, our world is facing a moment of peril, and as a responsible chief minister, our chief minister of Tamil Nadu, Talabadi M.K. Stalin, has viewed the situation. More than 5,000 Tamilian students got stranded in Ukraine, so viewing the situation within its limited capacities. Sir, foreign policy is the union domain. So within its limited capacities, he wrote a letter to you requesting the immediate evacuation. Not only that, he had also constituted a committee comprising MPs, MLAs, IAS officers, and appointed a nodal officer also to coordinate between their relatives and help those students with the financial aid also in the border countries, along with the tying up of the diaspora. And apart from this, the state government had also opened a 24-7 help desks in the Podihai uh, Illam in New Delhi. So it is the uh, responsibility, uh, responsibility of the Indian government as well also to take proactive steps. While we appreciate the Operation Ganga, as uh, Mr. Manish Diwari had pointed out, much of self-boosting propaganda has been done in line with that, but we appreciate the efforts, but there are a few lacunas in it. Sir, I would like to point out to the union minister through you that the operation done was not an evacuation. It is 
uh, transportation. Sir, lastly, our students were told they had to reach somehow to the border, either by walking on foot or by commuting through local trains or buses. No assistance was given to them except advices, and that is the lacuna I would like to point out to the Honorable Minister, sir. Also, our Prime Minister, uh, while viewing, taking stock of the situation, uh, emphasized make in India in medical education and uh, to, hold, to quote him, he said, I quote, can't our state governments make good policies for land allotment in this regard? Unquote. Sir, it's not the question of just allotting lands. It is the question of allowing opportunities for the students from marginal and weakening sections yes. to enter into medical colleges and that is why Tamil Nadu strictly resists the need in, uh, back home. Sir, in the last five years, an average of 16 lakh students appear for the NEET exam, but only 88, 120 make it to the 562 medical colleges in India. Yeah. It is not just those who score yeah. 200 out of 300 in NEET choose to go to foreign universities, but those who score 90th percentile in NEET are also opting to go out. Also, like other competitive exams in India, the cutoff for need rises dramatically. That is why we vehemently uh, oppose this. Yes. Sir, the Indian medical students who have been now transported to India are facing an abyss now. There is no future for them. It looks very volatile because the NMC regulation says medical graduates from a foreign university will have to complete their education from a single institution. Now, that's a problem that they have to face. Government need to make take redressal measures for that. Yes. And also, the union government should take remedial steps yes. regarding the foreign medical graduate examination, yes. FMGE. It can be advanced and final year students can be appointed on duty. Yes. Sir, while this is a local scenario, sir, sir, two more minutes. Local scenario, I'm the only speaker, please, sir. This is the local scenario. The issue is much more larger. Sir, the Asian aid says the Russian forces finding increasing Ukrainian resistance are following the Syrian playbook of attacking hospitals, schools and civilians, including women and children in a war of attrition. Sir, while we understand that our uh, external affairs minister has repeatedly reiterated that India respects the international order and the sovereign territory, territory as well as the integrity of the borders, we have to also take up the moral responsibility of who is the oppressor and who is on the uh, other side of the war. So though it's a tight corner because of a dependence on Russia's oil and gas, also the long-tested relationship as had been pointed out by honorable members here, we can't just be sitting on this uh, fence as a mute spectator, just having the moment of Hamlet, Shakespeare's Hamlet, to be or not to be, that's the situation. Mm -hmm. Sir, our BJP uh, as well as our government always prefers about Vashidaiva Kudumbakam. If the whole world is a family, when Ukraine is part of one of the world's family, is it not a moral responsibility to go and give a helping hand to Ukraine? Yes. Also, our Prime Minister has many times reiterated that India is Vishwa Guru, the world's teacher. And I would like to quote Professor Pulapari Balakrishnan's statement here. He says, a teacher is, a grant, is granted respect for speaking truth to power. India mocks her chosen self-image by refusing to speak the truth. So, sir, they say everything is fair in the game of war and love, but you cannot justify war in any sense of fairness in it. S sir, I would like to share a few points to highlight why it is an unfair war, sir. The first point is... Uh, the Russian president has... So long he has been ironically justifying this aggression, saying that he is going to denazify Ukraine. Sir, it is a fiasco. Ukraine has embraced the Nazi Germany in 1940s, carried out by the Russian then, and it, uh, our Ukraine president Zelensky's father was also a victim of that cruelty. And Ukraine is a UN member state and declared war on it by a permanent member of the Security Council is itself a violation in the UN Charter. The International Court of Justice has condemned it. And a very important point, sir, I would like to inform you, uh, through you to the uh, Union Minister, the Indian judge on the International, International Court of Justice, I debar from 
referring his name, he has also voted against Russia. And India has also breached the BRICS resolution, which it had passed unanimously in its New Delhi declaration, as quoted in the Hindu 21st March. Sir, Ukraine, as pointed out by the Honorable Member Mr. Diwari, gave up the nuclear arsenal after signing the Budapest Memorandum on the basis of the security given by the veto held holding permanent members. Now it is also a breach on that. Sir, as pointed out by Professor Vinay Kaura, I quote, those in India echoing Russian resentment against the eastward expansion of NATO are reminded by a Western analyst that a NATO-Russian council has been formed specially to alleviate Russian concerns and that Russia was recognized as one of the world's leading industrial powers through a formal admission into its elite G7, not on the basis of industrial might, but to soften its bruised super-ego, unquote. Yes, Madhi, no, As I please. said, last, last, one minute, last, sir, last, last point, sir, Sue, sir. I would sum up with the following observation of G and Devi, I quote, today, India stands in a splendid international isolation because it has not only come a long way from Nehru's non-alignment policy, but also forgotten that Nehru's non-alignment in external affairs was organically linked to his idea of a non-partisan secularism in home affairs. And therefore, rarely did either of them sound hollow in his case, unquote. Sir, also India has not officially discarded the Panchashil principles, not yet, though it has moved from its non-aligned posture during the Cold War to its multi-alignment in the 21st century of that. Yes. Sir, I also just like to conclude again by Devi by quoting a passage by, by the writers by the writers in an open letter which was released by the Penn International. They say, I quote, there can be no free and safe Europe without a free and independent Ukraine. Peace must prevail. Thank you very much, sir. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good.